Terry Bowden has elevated the standard here at the University of Louisiana Monroe. This is the football program that has sat at the bottom of the Sun Belt Conference for too long. And over the past couple of seasons, you've started to see some rise. And now expectations at the University of Louisiana Monroe are getting higher. However, when you enter this season, you're going to be pretty thin at the quarterback position. And there are a lot of key contributors that leave pretty much every position for the Warhawk team in 2023. However, there is still hope that this team can continue to improve record-wise in the Sun Belt Conference. Are we going to see the University of Louisiana Monroe Warhawks make a bowl game in 2023? Or is this team with all they lost going to take a step back down towards the bottom of the Sun Belt Conference? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. I'm previewing and predicting all 133 FBS-level college football teams this summer. Guys, that means I'm doing your favorite team. So hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when that video gets up uploaded but there are more ways than that that you can help me support my channel hey you're doing one right now by watching the video you can do more by liking commenting sharing and anything else that you guys are willing and able to do to help me support my channel again whatever you guys do means a lot to me um the, the support on the channel has been insane this summer so i thank you guys so so much for that let's talk about ulm football in 2023 but we gotta know how we do things around here we're gonna go through a roster overview and look at who the team lost who's coming back and who's coming in through the transfer portal and recruiting class, as well as taking a look at the 2023 ULM football schedule, and we'll give it a game-by-game -game preview and prediction. So, without further ado, let's look at the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks entering 2023. The quarterback position, you are going to lose your starter from last season and that is Chandler Rogers he has transferred off to North Texas he had 2,403 yards 15 touchdowns and seven interceptions for the team last season he was a pretty good option at the quarterback position for this team last year so losing him is huge especially now when you consider that this team does not have a lot of experience at the quarterback uh, uh at the quarterback position entering 2023 uh Jaya Wright is probably going to end up being your starter there. He is a former uh, community college, I believe actually a former JUCO transfer. Let me correct myself on that. I believe a former JUCO transfer. You also are getting Brian Garcia back and a transfer in Hunter Herring coming over, but it is expected to be Jaya Wright that takes over this program at the quarterback position. We'll see what he's made of. There's a lot of unknown, a lot of uncertainty in this quarterback room in terms of experience at the FBS level. And now, Let's go ahead and take a look further at the skill position groupings. Let's take a look at the running back room. Well, you are going to lose some really key guys here as well. Malik Jackson was your leading rusher, 507 yards and six touchdowns, not to mention what Chandler Rogers did on the ground, 353 yards and five touchdowns. So again, speaking of uh, uh, the rushing threat Chandler Rogers is going to be gone in that regard too and then Andrew Henry was your third leading rusher second among running backs he is gone 322 yards and four touchdowns last year and no other running back for this team had over 100 yards last season so your top two running backs from last year are gone enter in some transfers Thad Franklin and Isaiah Woolard I believe are both a really really deep power five transfers that enter in to this program to help give this team a boost at the running back position again we'll see what both of those guys are made of here in 2023 when you take a look at the wide receiver room all right you're going to lose some pretty key pieces here your second leading receiver in jevin fret 382 yards two touchdowns uh Boogie Knight is also going to be gone 170 yards in the touchdown for him. And then Fred Lloyd, 136 yards on seven catches for him last season. But you do get some pretty big pieces back in this wide wide receiver room. Most notably, your leading receiver from last year in Tyrone Howell. Really, really good player. In my opinion, one of the better receivers that you will see out of a Sunbelt Conference team. 852 yards and six touchdowns last season. All Red Luke is also going to be coming back as well. 293 yards and a touchdown for him last year. And you do get some transfers coming in, but most notably, uh, and by that I mean he's highest up on the depth chart, is Bud Tolbert. And uh, again, like I said, you do get a lot of other transfers coming in. The uh, coming in to the wide receiver room this year. When you take a look at the tight end room, Zach Rasmussen is going to be gone. Was your leading receiver among tight ends, 133 yards and four touchdowns last season. So who will be leading the tight end room this year? Noah Quinlan and Ryan Green, both of which had their fair share of catches last year. Quinlan with seven and Green with four. And then on the offensive line, you're losing two very key pieces. Victor Color and Peyton Dunn are both gone transferred off to new programs uh but Kedrell Lewis uh Zarian McGill Stacey Wilkins comes back and then Markel Smith is a transfer coming in and you got some more of those 
uh, transferring into this program as well. So again, going to be a fairly new look offense. You lost a lot of key pieces. Yes, Tyrone Howell is back, but we'll see especially what the quarterback position is made of for this team here in 2023. Now, defensively, well, the big losses don't just stop there. You got a lot of big losses on defense, especially on this defensive line. Quincy Ledet, Caleb Thomas, Seth Mason, and Anthony Campbell all of them are going to be gone. Uh, most notably of those is Quincy Ledet. That's why he's listed first. 37 tackles, three uh, sacks for the team last season. He is a really, really good player. Caleb Thomas had a sack and a half for this team last year as well. So you just lose four really good uh, and some of them pretty big bodied defensive linemen. Uh, but uh, you are going to return Kennard Snyder. Uh, so he will be coming back to this team. Uh, he was your leading tackler among defensive linemen last year and third overall on the team, 59 tackles and a sack last season. And then a lot of transfers come in. Donnell Harris, Jalen Ware, and Aiden Huntington among the most notable ones. But again, there are a lot more transfers that come into this defensive line. Linebacking room. Again, big losses don't just stop here. Zach Woodard, your leading tackler from last year, is gone. 77 tackles and two sacks for the team last season. Quay Drake is also going to be gone. Your fourth leading tackler, 47 tackles and half a sack for him last year. And then Jackson Bailey uh, is also going to be gone off of this team as well. But when you take a look at who is coming back, not a lot of notable transfers coming into this program through the linebacking room, but you do get a lot of notable returners. That is your second leading tackler, Tristan Driggers, uh, uh, 63, 63 tackles, my apologies, and a sack, and led the team with three interceptions last season. Michael Baton and Carl Glass, some other names that return to this linebacking room. And then when you take a look at the defensive back room, uh, Keydrain Calligan and Jabari Johnson are both going to, uh, to be gone. Uh, uh, each of them had three pass defended last season, but you do still get some nice pieces back in the secondary this season. Lou Tillery is coming back. Deuce Mayberry, Simon Hines, Carlin Vidgers, as well as some transfers coming in, uh, Norman Massey and some others transfer into this program to help give a boost to this secondary. Your head coach is Terry Bowden. Your offensive coordinator is Matt Kubik. And your defensive coordinator is Vic Koenig, as we'll take a look now at the Warhawk football schedule for 2023. Hey, any game you see at home is going to be underlined, while any game on the road will be in italics or that slanted text. Any game you see in green is a game. I think the Warhawks will win easily. Any game in yellow is a game that, uh, well, could be a back-and-forth 50-50 type game, but I still think the Warhawks are going to be able to win, and red is a loss. You get a pretty difficult opponent to enter into 2023. It is against the Army Black Knights, and I do believe that the Warhawks will be losing this game. I do not believe that this defense, with all that they lost, are ready in week one for a dynamic rushing attack like Army. Again, it is just the style of football that Army happens to play, and even though there are some key pieces gone off that defense, they still got a lot of hard-hitting and big bodies on that defense. I think Army is going to be able to take it to ULM, and they're going to be able to win that game here in week one now week two you do get an fcs level opponent in lamar coming in to town here and i do believe that you will end up winning this game i think lamar can make it close can make it can make it competitive but i do not see ulm uh, dropping this game here so your first win of 2023 comes in week two against lamar but you got a team up next here out of the ranks of the SEC that I think you have no shot at beating with the current uh, level of talent on this roster. Uh, and especially when you look at Texas A&M, the current level of that roster uh, uh, as well. I know the disappointment that Texas A&M had last year, but this is the team that could play with their hair on fire in 2023. Bobby Petrino is in his offensive coordinator. We'll see if that gets fixed. They have a quarterback they're very confident about in Connor Wiegman. Again, number one recruiting class a couple of cycles ago. A lot of those players, if they haven't transferred, are going to start to get in to that system. That's a Texas A&M team that I think is going to have a very nice bounce back season, and I do not see ULM beating them uh, or maybe even being competitive in any sort of the slight there as well. You got a very early bye week for, for uh, University of Louisiana Monroe, but you come out uh, of that bye week in to Sunbelt play, and you got to play the App State Mountaineers. Look, that team uh, did lose their starting quarterback, Chase Bryce. That team did lose uh, just uh, a ton of talent in the linebacking position. However, App State, if that 
uh, if whoever happens to play quarterback for that team pans out and plays really, really well, maybe not Chase Bryce level, but plays well. Uh, he's got Nate Noel coming back at running back, a very experienced group of wide receivers. And yeah, you're going to have to step up uh, the talent there in that linebacker room, but defensive line, secondary, you got a lot of nice pieces coming back. I think App State can be a pretty solid team this year. Again, I think a lot hinges on what happens at quarterback for them th this season, but uh, this game right here, uh, I think ULM will be able, or excuse me, I think ULM is going to drop there. Maybe they can stay competitive depending on how quarterback play uh, pans out for the Mountaineers, but I do see you losing that game. And you are also not going to be beating the South Alabama Jaguars. That's a team that is one of, if not the favorite to me in the Sun Belt Conference this season. They got a lot of returning talent for a team that already won 10 games last season. They can do it again here in 2023 a lot of returning talent, a team that could represent the group of five in the New Year's Six Bowl game. I think you're going to end up dropping that game there to South Alabama, and you'll drop the game to Texas State as well. That's a team bringing in a very interesting option at the head coach uh, position. G.J. Kinn led Incarnate Word to the most dynamic offense in FCS and an FCS semifinal as well. A lot of very talented transfers are coming into that program. I think Texas State makes a jump in Sun Belt play this season. Uh, and I think they will be beating the Warhawks there in week seven. Week eight comes on the road against Georgia Southern. This Warhawks secondary is not ready for the type of passing attack you're going to see with the Georgia Southern Eagles. Yes, Kyle Van Trees is gone. He was absolutely dynamic for the passing attack last season. However, you get another veteran quarterback coming in in Davis Brin for Clay Helton's group. There are some solid pieces back on that defense as well. Uh, Georgia Southern can be poised for a breakout year in the Sun Belt Conference. The, the season, uh, especially that passing attack, that'll be it'll just be too much for the Warhawks. Now, you do get a game against Arkansas State. This is a team that has just fallen downhill over the past couple of seasons in the Sun Belt Conference and entering th this season. While they might be trying to play for their, or they might be trying to play for their head coach's job, Butch Jones is the head coach there now, uh, and the. the that offense, while is replacing a quarterback, the run game has to get better. I think the wide receiver room can be pretty solid. It's overall an offense that, again, if quarterback play pans out and that rushing attack can improve, I think it's an offense that can be pretty solid. But I think with what this Warhawk, I think with what this Warhawk offense has, again, if the quarterback position happens to work out, they'll find a guy they like by this point, and that I think is playing pretty good football for this team. I do believe the Warhawks are going to win at least one other game this season, and I think your best shot to do it is this one right here against the Arkansas State Red Wolves. That's a game that I believe you guys are going to win. On the road against Southern Miss, I believe, is a loss. With all that Louisiana lost up front, yeah, you still got some pretty good linebackers there, but that's a Southern Miss rushing attack that's going to be second to none in the Sun Belt Conference this year. Frank Gore Jr. comes back, and while they're going to be replacing a quarterback there trying to find uh, – a new guy to pan out there. You also do have some nice returning pieces on defense coming back. So on the road against Southern Miss, I think it'll be a loss for ULM. And then these next two games are just going to be really, really tough to even try to be competitive in. Troy is a team I also really like in the Sun Belt Conference this season. Hey, they won the thing last year. They can do it again this year. Yeah, a lot of defensive options are going to be gone uh, to the NFL transfer portal and uh so, some other methods as well, but it's a defense that I still think is going to perform really well in 2023. The offense returns a lot of talent. Uh, ULM will be no match for Troy. There will also uh, be no match for the Ole Miss uh, Rebels as Ole Miss, uh, a team, again, coming out of the SEC, very loaded quarterback room. Quinshawn Judkins is one of the best running backs in the entire country. The defense keeps improving little by little. Ole Miss is going to be ULM. Uh, there as the Warhawks have to go on the road to play their final game of the year against their rival, the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. And I think you drop this game as well. Just too much talent for the Warhawks to handle uh, on the uh, side of the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. So I got the Warhawks finishing two and 10. Yes, it is a step back from what this team has shown that they are capable of in the past. However, I believe with all that they lost, uh, the quarterback position is thin. You lost someone major out of pretty much every single 
position grouping. While there are a lot of solid pieces here, the uh, schedule is uh, fairly tricky. You've got some really, really tough out of conference games. And then once you get into Sunbelt play, especially towards the upper echelon of the division that they are in this year, it's going to be some really good football played. But that'll do it for my predictions on the Warhawks. Sunbelt predictions are done. Coming up later tonight will be my standings video. Hey, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye.